Well, thanks, Steve, for joining me today. Um, Excellent. Thank you. Now, before we begin with uh, some of the questions that I had ready, you started talking about how you've been using Zoom to um, to work. Is, how has that been going? How has it been like uh, voice recording with, without your colleagues really there um, from home? It's a change, but not a big change in that voiceovers have kind of been going from home for 13, 14 years, maybe is about the first time I had to send an audition through uh, digital means, you know, e email auditions that I recorded at home before the challenge for what I call management, the people with the money who were hiring us was to figure out how to make all of it happen remotely. And then uh, one of the solutions was to use Zoom as well as other audio software to connect actors to the picture so that they could do dubbing. And similarly, when I'm directing, I have the picture here so that I can see dubbing the way I would in the studio when I was directing. And there are other platforms that people have come up with to sync picture and audio. It's still pretty loose but it it's workable and it doesn't seem to take really that much longer than it ever did in the studio other than you kind of have to pad the schedule in case stuff goes wrong because stuff goes wrong every day or one of the programs goes out or zoom is uncooperative so that part of it is new because prior to covid if you could record in the studio you would record in the studio so let's, let's move on to um to a game that recently added neji as a uh as a v DLC character, uh, Naruto Tabuto Shinobi Striker. It took him two years to add Neji as a DLC character. Personally, I feel as if Neji was so important that he should have just been a standard character. What do you think yeah. about? Yeah, what do you think about Neji being introduced so late in the that in Shinobi Striker's life? Well, I suppose I have two ways of looking at it. One is anytime Neji is coming up, I'm happy about it because that means the phone call comes and I, and I have a job. But I would agree with you that it does seem like Neji was enough of a principle that he would have been in it from the beginning, uh, even though I did die. But I, but I suppose they have to keep it, keep it interesting. And I, I don't, rem it was just t about a month ago that I did a Naruto video game. Um, is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. That's the one. That's, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, psyched about that. I did that from here. I did that uh, in the closet right here. <laughs> right. Well, let's let's talk a bit. You mentioned Neji's death. Were you yes. shocked when you found out your character was being killed off? I had already by the time Neji died. I feel like I had already been doing Naruto for ten years. Okay. So no, I was not surprised because something has to happen ten years later, mm -hmm. and it was a long arc of getting to the death. And then I died, which was pretty dramatic, if you recall. Mm -hmm. um, but then it's Naruto. So two weeks later, I was back in <laughs> for flashbacks and all this <laughs> other stuff. But I thought it was a nice, I mean, I thought having Neji die kind of made sense. So I wasn't surprised or disappointed necessarily because it's just been su such, such a great job. I, I never thought it would go that long. No, no jobs in your acting career last for 13 years. I mean, you know. Mm. So you said that it, like, you, you, it was justified, his death. You didn't think it was pointless? A, a lot of fans thought that, why did you kill off Neji? Like, he was the only one to die from Naruto's friends. The only one. And I know. I, I too have to admit, I, I, was, I was a bit disappointed when he died. I was, I was pretty disappointed. <laughs> well, I mean, I was too. But in a way, just the way you're describing it is kind of one of the reasons characters get killed off is so that you feel exactly the way you felt. It increases mm. your visceral connection to a show similar to the way I felt when I saw the Red Wedding. <laughs> and, I was, and I had no, I, I was like, is that, are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to kill off half your cast? But I realize what you're saying is Neji was the only friend to die. And so, yes, that's a bummer on one hand, but on the other hand, it, it does increase your, your visceral connection to a show to, to have to feel that deeply. 
Yeah, I, supp I suppose that does make sense. I mean, there's a lot of bands that did say that after that point, um, that's when Naruto and Hinata really hit it off. So yeah. he was kind of the bridge between them, which is, which is interesting, I suppose. It's um, an interesting way to look at it. And, and then from my way of looking at it, Neji died, and then they started another series called... Naruto. Rock Lee and Friends or whatever. That's what I remember it being called. So for oh, me, yeah. Neji died, but then I went into a whole other series where I played young Neji. So f in my mind, going to the same studio with all my same people, it didn't seem it didn't seem that different. Rock Lee and Friends is what we called it. I actually think the title might be different when it came out, but no, 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 no. that one I actually I actually forgot about that one. So that's that's my fault. It, it was a little fun. I mean, it was a joking, funny series. It wasn't you know deep. Yeah, that, that one was quite light humoured and it, it was really fun. And it took a little spin off the series where it was through the eyes of Rock Lee. It was, it was actually quite um, fun. Did, did you enjoy voicing that one? Oh, yeah, because Neji is serious. Neji was not exactly mm. full of life. So when I would go in on those Neji sessions, everything, you know, was very serious. And then on Rock Lee, still got to be serious Neji but to be the straight man to Rock Lee's craziness mm -hmm. and to get to say jokes as Neji, it felt like candy. Does that make sense? After being so serious with Neji all those years to go in and do Rock Lee and Friends as Neji, it, it just felt like, like a one long blooper reel. Because it was still me, Danielle, Brian, you know, so... Yeah. so I love doing that show. That, that show was so much fun. It, we would actually crack up and you know laugh well not that we wouldn't do that during regular naruto records but you know it was fun okay now i mentioned baruto um which is the next naruto next generations mm -hmm. um neji has been in it through some couple of flashbacks i, I don't yeah. think he has in the english dub yet just the japanese version um now oh, the series so is in, the series is in, sorry keep going i want to look up something based on what you just said it, it, it was a very brief moment and it hasn't been done in english yet <laughs> oh yeah boruto okay mm. i'm uh, yes i know what you're talking about i i see that here in my email how's that oh really so you have you have been uh so you have been um approached about it yet so are you excited I'm familiar with it let's leave it at that only because i don't have any information about Okay. What I may or may not be able to say, but I am familiar with that. Thank you. Yes. If you are selected then, <laughs> which I assume you would be, but would, and you are working on it, if hypothetically, I, would you be excited to return as Neji? Oh yeah. For so many reasons, right? Just because Naruto is such an iconic show. Like I said earlier, a job that lasts this many years, ha, I couldn't be any luckier to have a job then transfer to also be video game. That's a whole other thing that doesn't normally happen with your regular jobs. So uh, I think it would be great. I would love for that to spin into a whole other something. Why not? Everybody who watched Naruto has grown up now. That, that, is, a, that is a good point, may, may included. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the series has introduced the, the ability to bring back life through cloning synthetic humans, the reanimation jutsu. Do you think there's a chance Neji could be brought back to life? I don't know, but, mm. but I mean, that I really don't know. But wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Uh, talk about a whole new chapter, right? Um, I would love to see something like that happen, right? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Plus, I would imagine that the plot line of such a story would be exciting. Oh yeah, of course. If if it happened, I and you're excited, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I would be interested in seeing that. But the truth is, I have no information whatsoever, other than I am aware of the series. Okay. Well, look, honestly, I I I think that it's a possibility, and if you're excited, then I I suppose fans should be excited too. Yeah. Um. Now let's move on to Bleach because Bleach earlier this year was. Rumored, first of all. Oh, interesting. That, does that come off back, backwards or forwards? That, that, that's forwards for me. That's forwards oh, for me. Yeah. I did not do this on purpose, but when I saw that this is what I was wearing, I was like, oh, I'm going to keep this. On. I'm going to keep wearing this. <laughs> well, I wore, the, I wore the Naruto one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's cool. Yeah, it was just a little bit of subtlety. That. <laughs> that's awesome. 
Well, since obviously you're a pretty big fan of Bleach, um, are you excited that Bleach is returning, that this has been announced? I, I know that the Japanese comes out first and it's a little bit of time before the English uh, dub starts being worked on, but are you excited to hear about Bleach's return? What's exciting about it for me mm. is from a work standpoint, in terms of the phone call and driving and going to work, Bleach sort of just fizz, fizzled, it just disappeared one day from, the, from my perspective in terms of the phone calls coming, we got another Bleach, can you do Bleach on Thursday, that kind of thing. And then it just sort of ended. And so it would be fun to revisit that a, as a way to live it anew since there wasn't a real sense of closure for the actors anyway, when it ended, because, well, that's just not how it works when you're li here living it, you know what I mean? It's all about where and when, if that makes sense. And once it's over, it's over and no one says a word. <laughs> that's just the way it is. Because they are rewriting the ending of Bleach, the, because um, the series didn't technically end when the anime ended. The manga continued for some <laughs> years after that. Yeah. And um, so th they have to rewrite that whole ending, which is going to be interesting. So maybe you'll get some um, more closure and it'll end naturally rather than abruptly. Well, and I have two chances because I could either get a job as Hitsugaya or uh, Shuhei Isagi. So I got my statistics are better. Uh, I have a better chance of getting a job since I have two, two roles. I, I, I'm pretty sure they play a big part in the upcoming arc as well. Will you be returning if you, if, if that, that has, you don't know? That's out in the ether. I have, that I have no immediate understanding of whatsoever. So chances are that will come as a surprise to me in an email and it'll be a request for work and that'll be as, as uh, fantastic as it gets. And I'll say, oh, I guess I'm in this. That's sort of how it works. Like when you do an audition and you get a call for a costume fitting and you say, I guess I booked the part <laughs> before anybody tells you you got the part because you have to go for a fitting, that, that kind of story. Okay. If, uh, if they did approach you and send you that email, are you um, replying to that email or are you putting it in junk? <laughs> <laughs> no, I will be, I'll be uh, replying because that's what I'm set up to do, especially now working from home, even little particulars like the studio where this occurs is a mile and a half from my house. And so, yeah, I would, I'm available for all of my jobs. I'm spending a lot of time now directing, but that's because that's something I can do here from home during COVID. Uh, keeps me in the, keeps me in the fray. I have the skills to be able to do that. And so it's easy to adjust your schedule to fit in, jobs like Naruto or Bleach, which would only happen for two, three or four hours at a time anyway. Okay. Um, so obviously if they're, if they're only working two, three, four hours on two series at a time, that means you're working on a lot at once. What are you currently working on right now? I assume maybe after this, maybe you've got something to do as well. Uh, the only thing I'm currently working on other than directing is uh, the video game Guild Wars 2, where I'm uh, a Sora male PC, which is a game, uh, also a game that I've been doing for years, like eight, eight years. And I go in on it all the time. They keep having new uh, expansions all the time. I mean, it's like being on a series. I come in, I have hundreds of lines to read, like almost every couple of months. Like this thing keeps going. It's a, also a great job. That's something that I've been involved in for many years and something that I recorded last month and something I'm going to do again next month. Um, and in, in my acting, things like commercials or a couple of weeks ago, I did a haunted voice for a uh, Halloween something or other that people will see at aquariums and botanical gardens, you know, jobs like that, that you're not thinking of in the outside world as famous things or series, but they're one-off jobs that pay money, which is the whole point of this career. And then um, in directing, I just finished up the show that here anyway is on Cartoon Network called Demon Slayer. And okay. um, my other shows, 
Gundam shows that I've directed, the Gundam Build Divers, and then the other shows that, again, I'm not sure whether I can or can't say. So uh, other shows as well. And that's what I'm actually busy doing, even though it's COVID. I'm, I'm busy because show business doesn't stop. And when you're in a field where the job can easily be done from home, it hasn't slowed down. Everybody has figured out how to make it work. Even my jobs on uh, feature films and TV shows where they need voiceovers to come in and either be the people in the background or the voice on the telephone or the guy coming out of the TV. Those are all acting jobs, day player roles even. And those you can do from home as well. And since there was such a dip in production, now it's back up so that there's plenty of content and that has uh, mercifully and blessedly kept me uh, busy in the last few months. Those first two months of COVID were, I mean, there was nothing happening. We were all just sitting here, but things have found a way to get rolling again, at least in my part of show business. Okay. You mentioned Demon Slayer really briefly there. Mm -hmm. um, a very new anime that's, that's come about relatively compared to the other two, but mm -hmm. its popularity has expanded bloated uh, tell me about um you know what do you think about demon slayer do you think it's going to surpass the naruto's and the bleaches of the past hard to say when it comes to naruto and bleach they were just so epic i mean the only thing i can think of at least in my world that's similar to that would be sailor and some of those other shows that have lasted i mean i know there are more uh and I know that one of the first things I heard about Demon Slayer when I got that job was how popular it was and then continued to be popular once we f uh, finished working on it, dubbed it and put it on TV. So I don't, I don't know whether or not there's more, but the general way this goes down is popular shows get another season. So I would love to see it come back because I don't know, it had, a lot, it had a lot of heart and there were a lot of people on it and I liked working with everyone. Same with Promised Neverland, which is a show I, I directed last year, which I really liked because it was so different. I mean, it was anime, but it, I don't know. Did you watch that show? Uh, no, but it is on my, it is on my to-do list, <laughs> I have to admit, because I've heard really good things about Promised Neverland. So it is genuinely on my to-do list to watch. So um, it's so different. Yeah, yeah, I've been told that. So different. I mean, yes, there's a supernatural component, but it doesn't manifest in every episode. And it's got this weird, dark, <laughs> yet light. I don't know. After having seen so many shows over these years, that one struck me as something very original. Okay. In a, in a, a more grown-up way, because it's dealing with kids and they're stuck in this house. And I don't know. It, it, was, in, it was intriguing. Okay. Interesting. Um, I'll be sure to check it out. <laughs> yeah, check it out. I, I don't remember how many episodes we did, 10 or 12 probably, and or maybe 20. I lose track, but it is a cool story about orphans and who knows where they go after they turn 11, and it's dark, but fun. Characters are great. Okay. Well, again, thank you so much for your time today. I know I said it before the interview started, but thanks again. Oh, of and course. I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I I find it stunning, this must make me old, that we are literally on different sides of the planet and hemispheres, and we're just having this conversation on TV like it's Star Trek. Yeah, I, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I woke up about uh, two hours ago, and you've been awake for the last, I don't even know how many hours. <laughs> two hours, no, it, it's <laughs> almost 2.30 in the afternoon here, and for you, it's tomorrow, my tomorrow morning, right? It is, it is. I, I'm technically a time traveler. <laughs> well, you're a time traveler. You got your little TARDIS. <laughs> I don't have any good stuff right here. Perfect. Thank you again for, for your time. And, oh, my uh, gosh. Thank you so much. I was so excited to get your invite just because it came kind of randomly. And um, <laughs> I, 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 ha happy to oblige, Peter. Thank you.